In the Philippines, we celebrate Christmas the longest. Tayo yung pinaka matagal na nagse-celebrate ng Pasko sa buong mundo. And every time foreigners would come to the Philippines, do nila nakikita na ibang iba yung celebration natin ng Pasko dito sa Pilipinas. Right? Kailan tayo nag-uumpisa usually dito pag nag-start na yung tinatawag nating Misa de Gallo? When does it usually start? December 16. Diba? Usually, sa bagay, historically, hindi naman natin ginagawa yun. Diba? And then we end kapag, ano na, celebration ng Three Kings, which is on January 7th. Diba? So usually, ganun natin tinitingdan yung kalendaryo while we are celebrating Christmas, at least in our context. And that's one of the things na medyo nalungkot ako nung umalis ako ng Pilipinas. I remember on my third year, no, on my second year, patapos ko ng second year, Christmas, nagpunta ako dun sa aking church. Christmas celebration, isang Sunday. And then, immediately after Christmas, tapos na yung celebration. And what I did was I went back to my school and I was reviewing on a Christmas day because I had a Greek, Greek proficiency exam on the 26th ng December. Could you imagine, 25, pagkatapos mo mag-church service, mag na ako from Guangzhou City, which was like six hours away from Seoul, and then, doon sa may bus, on Christmas Day, nagta-travel ako ng six hours, pabalik ng Seoul, at pagbalik ko sa Seoul, ako ay nagre-review because I have an exam the following day. Ang saklap ng buhay. So sa mga pagkakataong yun, may realize mo talaga, ang sarap mag-celebrate ng Pasko sa Pilipinas kahit papano. Because at least you have a break in everything. Well, uh, hindi mo naman pwedeng masisi yung bansa nila because they're not really a Christian country. So they're not really into celebrating Christmas that long. But in the Philippines, since we are considered as the quote-unquote only Christian country in Asia, that's why we're celebrating Christmas the longest. And we are very much excited. Maraming mga bagay tayong excited tuwing Pasko. Unang-una rito, gift giving. Ayan. Mamaya, meron tayong white elephant. Hindi natin alam kung may lalabas na elepante rito mamaya. Dahil white elephant ang tawag natin sa ating uh, exchange gift mamaya. Sino sa inyo ang usually dito gustong-gusto ng gift giving? Ako, na-realize ko sa powerhouse leaders, si Shelly. Yan, si Shelly talaga gustong-gusto niyang namimigay ng regalo. Kaya po kung gusto niyo ng gift, taas ng kamay ngayon lahat ng may gusto ng gift para humaabutan kayo ni Shelly. And Shelly likes giving gifts. Sinabi niya po yan. Ayan, Shelly, pakitingin lahat ng mga nagtataas ng kamay. Ayan. Ayan. Ayan po. Si Shelly gustong-gusto niya na nagbibigay ng gifts. Si Kimiko naman, growing up, hindi nakakareceive ng gifts. Di ba? <laughs> Dahil nga, yung kanyang mga ninong at ninang, usually wala naman dito. At uh, hindi niya nakikita. Not only gift giving, but Christmas parties. Yan. Sino rito yung mga marami ng natin na na parties before yung powerhouse weekend natin ngayon? Sinakatan na yung mga Christmas party ng inyong mga uh, companies. Yan. Mga yan, mga nakatapos na, katin na ng Christmas party. Siyempre, pag Christmas party, may mga raffle, di ba? I-congratulate natin muna si Jeremiah kasi sa Christmas party nila last Friday, naging rap dito sa EFC, nanalo si Jem ng brand new LG Inverter Refrigerator. Yeah. <laughs> Lakpakan natin, di ba? Napaka-generous ng kanyang company, di ba? Nakakuha siya ng brand new LG inverter na refrigerator. Ayan, di ba? We like Christmas parties kasi usually maraming mga raffles tayo. And sino rito yung mga usually parang malas kapag may mga raffle? Yung talagang hindi nakakakuha. Di ba? Sino rito yung laging nananalo pag may raffle? Ayan, wala, wala. Oh, di ba? Parang usually sana man lang may makuha tayo kapag may mga raffle. Pero usually, Christmas parties are a time for us to celebrate. And sa mga companies, usually, of course, meron tayong mga raffles. At ito, syempre, hindi ito mawawala. Endless reunions. Ayan. Sino sa inyo ang may mga aatin ng reunion in the coming days or mga inatinan ng reunion the, uh, the days before our powerhouse weekend? May mga naatinan ng mga reunion. Reunion ng mga kamag-anak. 
Reunion ng mga classmates nung college. Reunion ng mga dating katrabaho. Reunion ng mga kaklase ng high school. Reunion ng mga kaklase ng elementary. Reunion ng mga kaklase ng kindergarten. ba? Diba? Kaya ubos ang pera. Dahil sa dami ng reunions ng mga inaatinan natin. But it's always a good thing for us to somehow to keep in touch as well again with our friends and our relatives kapag may mga reunions na ganito. Kasi usually it only takes a day in a year for us to usually catch up with these people. ba? Diba? Pero may mga tao ayaw talaga ng mga reunions. Kasi laging mga natatanong kailan ka mag-aasawa. Diba? Yung mga ganyan, ilan na boyfriend mo, ilan na girlfriend mo, yung mga ganyang mga tanungan. But not only endless reunions, usually sa Pilipinas, ito yung nagbabalik kasi nawalan tayo nito the last couple of years, diba? Ito yung Metro Manila Film Festival. Ayan, usually before, diba? Kapag dating ng December 25th, wag kang manonood ng sinehan dahil jam pack sa mga sinema. Sino rito ang nanood ng 25 at kayo ay naka-SRO? Ayan, naka-standing room only. Diba? Usually one week. Hindi lang natin alam ngayon kasi yung uh, business ng cinema naging matamlay for the last couple of years. I'm not sure if meron kayong inaay na mga panoorin ng mga, na mga pelikula. Ako talaga ang inaay ko, Avatar. No Way Home, 3D. Kaya lang tiningnan ko sa Evia Lifestyle sa Las Piñas, ang price niya is 1,000 pesos. 1,000, but I'm willing to shell out. Kasi napanood ko yung Avatar also sa 3D, but that was shown when I was in Korea. So Avatar, parang nag-promote ako, James Cameron, baka naman. <laughs> <Di ba? laughs> nag-promote ako ng Avatar No Way Home. It, it's like around 3 hours and 12 minutes long. Kaya ganun siya katagal. And uh, I promise, gusto ko talaga siyang panoorin in 3D. Ayoko sa regular cinema. Kasi I've been um, reading a lot of feedbacks and reviews ng mga maraming mga uh, cinema fanatics. And they're saying that this is very much bigger in comparison to the first Avatar. ba? Sama tayo, lika na tayo. <laughs> Yan sa 3D, ah. Tayang kasi pag 400, nagdagaw na natin ng... Minsan lang naman tayo gagasto sa 3D. Ha? Hindi. <laughs> 1,000 isa. Mahal na ito. Di ba? Nakita ko kahapon. 1,000 pesos. Pero 3D na yun. IMAX 3D. Yun na yung pinakamalapit na may IMAX 3D dito sa atin. Di ba? Talagang nag-check ako magdamag kahapon. Inanap ko talaga siya. I'm not sure kung kayo po ay gusto nyo yun. Or I'm not sure kung ilang taon kayo nung pinalabas ang Avatar. Sorry. <laughs> hindi ko alam. That was, I think, 2009 or 10. 9, 2009. Ilang taon kayo noon? 11. <laughs> Sorry, sino nakapanood sa inyo ng Avatar? Unang Avatar sa cinema. Yan. Mga kapatid, please, let's watch it on IMAX. Diba? 3D. Pero syempre, ipopromote na rin natin Metro Manila Film Festival, by the way, mga kapatid. I'm not sure again if you are eyeing movies na palabas sa mga sinehan by uh, December 25. But you know, Christmas has become so commercial. Right? Christmas has become so commercial that if we are not cautious, it might take our minds away from its true meaning. And so, ngayong gabi, babalikan muna natin ang istorya ng sabsaban. And tonight, we'll be looking at Luke chapter 2 verses 13 and 16. Basahin po natin, suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. You know, kung anong ibig sabihin ng manger, ang manger po is a long open box for horses or cattle to eat from. So pag pinag-usapan natin ang sabsaban, ang sabsaban po ay kainan ng mga kabayo. And Jesus 
the baby was born on a manger. Why do you think God chose for Jesus to be born in Bethlehem, particularly to be laid in a manger, which is kainan ng mga hayop? Tonight, ito po ang ating pag-aaralan in our Powerhouse Christmas Celebration. And this message is entitled, Christ, Christmas, and the Manger. From Luke chapter 2, verses 13 to 16. Tatlong bagay po yung iiwanan ko. Unang-una, the manger is an expression of God's provision. Ang sabsaban po ay expression ng pagbibigay ng Panginoon ng provision para sa atin. And when we talk about the provision, the manger being a provision, in the New Testament, when we talk about the word emptying, okay, when we talk about the word emptying, this came from the Greek word kenosis, meaning Jesus emptied himself. Meaning, yes, we know that Jesus is a God, but when he emptied himself, he emptied himself, not of his power, okay, but of his own will, because his will he definitely aligned to his father. Anong ginawa niya? Siya po ay nabuhay na katulad po natin. And this emptying is not something that Jesus Christ was sorry for. Because he voluntarily surrendered his will to the will of the father. And he did that out of his obedience sa ating ama. He emptied himself of his glory. You know, it would have been easier if Christ was born in a castle. Right? It would have been easier if Christ was born as a son of a Roman emperor. Mas madali yun para makonvince niya yung mga tao, hey, I am the Messiah, the son of God. Because he was born from a kingdom. He was born out of a dynasty, of a rulership. But then, the will of the Father was for him to be born on a manger where he emptied himself of his own glory. Bakit? Sabsaban, he did not empty himself of his character. He did not empty himself of his attributes. He did not even empty himself of his power. He emptied himself of the glory that he has when he has when he was with his father. And then he came as a human being, just like us, in order to be a provision for our salvation. You know, emptying of your glory is of Christ's glory is a way of God the Son to abide by the will of the Father. That means if he emptied himself of his glory, meaning he has to live in humility. How can you not live in humility kung ikaw ay ipinanganak sa sabsaban? Sa kainan ng mga kayo, sa kainan ng mga kabayo. From being with the Father in a place of glory to being born in a manger. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 7, and I like actually, pag pinag-aaralan ko lang Philippians chapter 2, verse 7, and trying to compare this with the parallel translations from the different translations of the scriptures, makikita nyo po dito, medyo maliit sa inyo dito, no? But I really like kung papaano ito tinranslate sa iba-ibang translations in the scriptures. In the New International Version, ang ginamit dito was, He made Himself nothing. In the New Living Translation, He gave up His divine privileges. In the ESV or the English Standard Translation or Version, but He emptied Himself. In the Berean Study Bible, ganun din, He emptied Himself. In the Berean Literal Bible, He emptied Himself. And in the King James Bible, this is what I like the most. Kasi ang nilagay na translation dito was, but made himself of no reputation. Well, reputation is something that we all care about. Right? Mahalaga sa atin yung pagtingin sa atin ng mga tao sa paligid natin. But he was Christ from a place of glory. He emptied himself of that glory and was born in a manger emptying himself and did not even think about his own reputation. Ano yung magiging tingin sa kanya ng mga tao? Was it easy for people to believe that Jesus Christ was the Messiah when all along they knew that he was born in a manger? Sabihin mo, ikaw ang Messias tapos pinanganak ka sa kainan ng mga hayop? Sa kainan ng 
mga kabayo, it's not easy for him to do that. But then again, what we have to understand here is that when we talk about the provision of God, when we speak of God's provision, at least here, makikita natin that that provision was actually Jesus Christ who emptied himself, who emptied himself of the glory that he has. And what he did was to be laid in a manger. Sino sa inyo kung kayo ay nanay, itatry ninyong ipanganak sa samsaba ng inyong mga anak. Matry nga to. Diba? Parang sa pagnanasa natin siguro na gayakin yung example na meron si Jesus Christ perhaps. But you know, it's very difficult for to be convinced at least na si Kristo ang Mesias kung siya ay pinanganak sa ganoon. Now, number two, it's not only that the manger was an expression of God's provision, but definitely the manger is an expression of God's presence. That's the reason why when we talk about the name Jesus, He was called Emmanuel, meaning what? Come on, people, what does Emmanuel mean? God is with us. And that's the meaning of Emmanuel, meaning God is is with us, meaning He will live like us. He will be amongst us. And He cannot be called as Emmanuel if He was born as a son of a Roman emperor, if He was born as a prince, because He has to live amongst the people. And that's why He was called Emmanuel, because He lived just like the ordinary human being during His time. But those ordinary human beings had a hard time accepting the fact that He was the Messiah, that they were waiting, being with the people, experiencing the hurt, the pain of the people. That is what it meant to be called an Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. It's not just a title, meaning Jesus is the Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. But there is a deeper underlying meaning of that phrase, God is with us, of the name Emmanuel. Meaning if we say that God is with us, meaning God is in the midst of us. He lived amongst us. He lived just like each one of us. He knew what it meant to grow up. Alam niya kung anong ibig sabihin ng makipaglaro, magkaroon ng kapatid. Mahirapan sa buhay kahit papano. And he experienced pain. He experienced being hurt. God being with us. Meaning, He was able to identify with the powerless. God being with us. Meaning, He lived with us. And He was able to identify with those who are lowly. Do you think it would be easy for us to understand the grace of God if Christ was not born just like one of us. Parang napakahirap na isipin natin, Lord, di ka naman makakarelate sa akin eh. Kasi pinanganak ang isang prinsipe. Kami, hindi kami prinsipe. Lord, hindi ka makakarelate sa buhay ko. Paano ka makakarelate? Eh, anak ka ng Roman emperor. And you might be next in line. But thank God, He was born as our Emmanuel meaning He was with us, He lived among us, and He lived just like us. He went through all the life stages just like we all did. He was conceived, He was born, He became a toddler, He became a child, He became a teenager, and He became an adult. But ultimately, He died. He was able to empathize with us because He is our Emmanuel. He is God with us. In Matthew chapter 1, verses 22 to 23, it says here, All these took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. In Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, 
Again, he cannot be called an Emmanuel if he did not live amongst us, if he did not live just like each one of us. And lastly, the manger is an expression of God's divine plan. The manger was the starting point of it all. The manger was the starting point of God's plan in our history unfolding right before the eyes of the Israelites, at least in his context, and in the eyes of those who hear the good news. You know, sometimes we try to romanticize the manger. Diba? Parang iniisip natin, ang cute naman sa sabsaban siya pinanganak. Ikaw kaya subukan ng nanay mo na ipinanganak ka sa sabsaban. Tignan natin kung cute yung ipanganak ka sa kainan ng mga hayop. And sometimes we try to romanticize that. But you know what it literally meant? It means God is our Emmanuel because He is going to live just like us. Kung kayo po ay magtatanong sa magulang ninyo ngayon at itatanong nyo, Mommy, Daddy, saan ako pinanganak? Anak, sa sabsaban. Ang cute, no? There's nothing to be romantic about being born in a manger. Kain na ng hayop, kain na ng kabayo, mabaho. But it was the Father's choosing that the Son who emptied Himself of His glory will be born in a manger. You know, the plot got exciting anyway because the story did not end in the manger. There were a lot of twists and turns along the way because the Christ who was born in the manger and who claimed as our Messiah was crucified on the cross. But the cross also was not the end of the story. In Luke chapter 23, verses 20, 42 to 43, this was the thief talking to Jesus doon sa cross. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered, truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. And then, it continued in Calvary. And the culmination of that story will be in paradise. You know, the story, our story, history itself, is the story of God's plan unfolding before our very eyes. When we were lost, and because of the sin that were transmuted in us, God has it all along in His mind, His plans for all of us. That's the reason why we say that this world is not our home anymore. But neither is the manger our destination. Our destination is paradise itself. In John chapter 14, verse 3, it says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. And you know what's exciting? Because when Jesus Christ emptied himself of the glory, when he was incarnated, that is the same glory that we will all be experiencing in paradise. And this is one verse in the scriptures which every time I would meditate, lagi kong iniisip, Lord, I am very much excited because I do not know what to expect and I know that you have great things in store, not only for me, but for all of us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, it says here, However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love Him. And so no matter how we try to imagine what, in, what is in store for us or what are in store for us, remember this. No ears have heard, no eyes have seen what God has actually in store for us in paradise. You know, the manger is an expression of God's divine plan for all of us. And as I said a while ago, the account did not end in the manger. The narrative did not conclude in Calvary. Our story, our story 
history itself will have its culmination in paradise. You know, it all makes sense. Because when you look at the narrative of the manger, you look at Christ. And when you look at Christ, you remember Christmas. But you know, the story did not end in the incarnation because Christ was crucified. But with that crucifixion, it also did not end there. After the crucifixion came the resurrection. And we will all be resurrected. Because that's the whole divine plan of God for all of us. The story will not end with the story in the manger. The story will not end in the story of the incarnation. But the culmination will be in paradise. That is our glorification. Yun na yung mga panahon na hindi na natin kailangang magtrabaho para maging masaya sa buhay. Yung mga panahon na hindi na natin kailangan maghintay ng 13th month pay para makabili pa ng refrigerator or ng TV o ng anumang mga bagay na makakapag-satisfy sa atin. Because again, whatever we want right now, this are nothing in comparison to what God has in store for all of us. So take heart. Napapagod tayo sa trabaho. Matatapos na ang taong ito. And another year is about to come. Magtatrabaho ulit tayo. But remember, the story will not end there. The story will end. Or if I may say, the story will all begin again when we will be with Christ in paradise where we will toil no more, but we will worship God together in heaven. Merry Christmas, everyone. Magandang gabi po.